Life is so fast-paced. When do we stop and consciously make decisions that determine our future? Will I go to university? What career do I want? Will I be who I want to be? I know a lot of people go into group homes and nursing homes and stuff like that, and people just assume that they get the help that they need, and they may get the help that they need, but they don't have the life that they should have. Um, it's just now that Steph's getting older and also, you know, I'm getting older that I'm starting to really think about the future. It puts a huge amount of pressure on the family network. Um, in many cases it means that parents have to give up work either completely or go back to a part-time structure. It also puts pressure on the other siblings within the family network. I was told that uh, it was leukaemia. I think I was actually put on treatment for that at one stage. Um, I don't know, probably a range of all different things, but eventually they came to the conclusion that it was um, rheumatoid arthritis. I know before going to school, my parents never thought that I would go to school. I'm not really sure why, maybe because it was such an unknown thing in that, but um, they just assumed that I wouldn't be going to school and things like that. But um, I did go to school. Well, I suppose... Over the years, we haven't really looked for much assistance. Um, I always thought that it was my job, so and I was quite capable. We were very capable of looking after her. But we have since found out that even though you don't need assistance, you should get it because it gets you into the system. No, like I've never felt any different, really. I suppose now that I'm getting older and I see people my age doing things that are becoming more difficult for me. You know, probably the last couple of years is probably the first time that I've started feeling different to other people. Every day. <laughs> yeah, of course it does. Yeah, <laughs> very afraid, but um, I don't know. I, as I said before, I think I'm still in denial, like, it hasn't really hit me yet that I might not be able to do everything that everyone else does. I keep thinking, okay, if Steph wants a job, is she going to have to pay for a full-time carer? Or, and, and how can you afford that? And, you know, it's just things like that that keep going through my mind. Or if she did want to travel, what happens then? Does Do you have to pay for a carer? Do you have to pay for two tickets, two lots of accommodation, or how does that work? I have big plans for what I want to do. I mean, everyone in the film industry especially does. But um, I'd love to work overseas, love to make it to LA one day, but um, even if I don't get there, like even just going to Sydney, you know, working at a film studio down there, because that's where the big stuff happens in Australia. Um, but even just moving to Sydney seems a bit of a stretch at the moment. Like, no, actually, you know, moving out here in Brisbane seems a stretch. Moving to Sydney is that little bit more impossible. Moving to LA is, well, I <laughs> don't even think about it. Um, so I'd love to work with amazing people. I'd love to work on amazing projects and things like that. But um, unfortunately, you have to go to where the projects are and where the people are, they don't come to you, so... Um, I think young care is the first step in the right direction, but apart from that, I don't know of anything. 
Um, young Care strongly believes that there should be choice for young people with high care needs. Um, usually um, their high care needs are at the result of an accident or how, they've been, how they were born um, and that's at no one's fault in many cases. So Young Care believes that there should be choice for all young people. Uh, that should be choice in accommodation options. It could also mean choice in the way their care, care is provided and any of the other lifestyle options that they should have choice with. You know, friends at uni are moving out, share houses and all that. Um, I'd like to do that, especially living closer to where I have to be every day. Um, but at the moment, it's just not really an option. And um, I've got a lot of friends traveling at the moment overseas. Um, and that, again, it's not really an option for me at the moment without like the help of my family and that, because it's you just need someone there with you that knows what you need and you know to take care of you and that so ideally i'd love some sort of accommodation where steph could be independent and yet be able to get help in i know there's a lot of people who support aged care but they don't seem to have that for young people so i really think they need the same sort of support that the aged care get but they need to have young people around them, not in aged care facilities. I think people just assume also as well, with just disabilities in general, that people just get help. Like, I, I, I know I wouldn't think about it. Like, you know, when they're younger, their parents take care of them. That's fine. But when they get older, what happens then? I don't even know. Um, I suppose they differ in, in various ways. Uh, firstly, they're not young people aren't surrounded by other people that are 86 years or older. Um, they're surrounded by other young people, and that's probably the most important. So the, the great thing about the apartments is they're like any apartment that a young person would want to live in. Uh, there's a self-contained kitchen that they can either prepare meals for themselves or their family and friends can prepare. Um, they've got the right amount of care within those apartments, like ceiling hoist to help them get around their own apartments. And there's a lot of common areas which is the most important that people can come together, enjoy a movie together and participate in other activities. You know, I keep trying to tell myself, well, surely she can't be the first person who, who has, um, in this situation, but um, you know, it's very hard to find. The, you, you have to ask the right people the right questions and they'll put you on to somebody else. But it's really a case of knowing where to go and there's nowhere you can go that they've got a list of, okay, if this is your problem, you need to contact this person, this person. It's really just, it just seems to be word of mouth. I mean, ultimately this problem's solvable. Um, we hope that Young Care's not around in 10 years' time, that the problem has actually been solved. Um, it's just going to take the minor, right amount of resources, both financial and just people's desire to make a change. Um, there isn't that, there are a lot of people out there that have this problem, but it can actually be solved. I'm not sure if it's going to stop me yet. I mean, I've always found a way to do things so far, so I figure there's got to be a way, like, there's always got to be a way, but um, I just am not sure how to get there yet, sort of, or make that come true in that. Yeah, we'll see.